looking, as we said just a moment ago, uh, sunny skies right now in Iron County. They'll turn partly cloudy by afternoon, and we'll see an afternoon high around 70 degrees. St. George is looking at sunny skies and 80 today. And in sports... Utah Jazz are set for a big Western Conference showdown. Utah will visit Phoenix tonight. The Jazz are in first place in the West with a record of 38-12. and 12, And the Suns are in second place with a record of 35-14. and 14. Great to see across the desk from me, McKinnon Hansen of Farm, Bureau's, uh, Farm Bureau Insurance. And McKinnon, uh, it is Wired Wednesday. Good morning, Chris. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you very much. Good. Welcome to Wired Wednesday with McKinnon Hansen. Today, I'm flying solo, which is... As am I. <laughs> right, which is great. And it's been a while since I've... Um, which I would... Without having a co-host... Um, our co-hosts are out fighting the fire out in, I said, I believe you said Choke Cherry area, just Choke north Cherry. of Burrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we are sad that the fire crew isn't in with us today. However, they are doing their jobs and they are keeping us safe and keeping those fires contained or to the best of their abilities. It's this morning, probably better to have them out there than in here. Yes, They wouldn't yes. be able to accomplish much here. No, no. In fact, I'm Which sure Which is would... par for the course for <laughs> anybody in this studio. We don't accomplish much on a day-to-day -day basis. Oh, though. no. You guys accomplish more than you think. And it's, it's really great that we have the fire crews and the fire chiefs and the fire marshals. And as we've had, had them on the radio before, we know their job is difficult. And we know that they provide value well beyond well beyond the surface of what, what their positions do. Right. And so I just want to give a quick shout out to them. Thank you so much for going and fighting the fires. It's kind of sad that we are at the beginning of April and fire season has yeah. already appeared to start it. Yeah. However, you know, as, as time will show, you know, we'll get rain seasons, we'll get dry seasons. So again, grateful for the firefighters out there. Thank you so much. A quick shout out to my friend Cami, who is listening this morning. Good morning, Cami. I hope you have a great day, and I hope that you and Kennedy get to play later this afternoon. Um, anyways, so on this Wired Wednesday, with me flying solo and with Chris flying solo too, I want to bring it bring it back a little bit of why I do this radio show, why I why I am an insurance agent, and why I choose to live in this wonderful community. And so with with all of that, I have grown up and been living around Southern Utah my entire life. Mm. I've always lived within two hours of Cedar City, regardless of family situation, and like a two-hour radius of Cedar City. And ever since I turned 18 and graduation night, I have lived in Cedar City. I moved out graduation night from Nevada, and I have lived here ever since. Mm. And that's been 13 years ago now, 14 years ago. And... I am truly blessed to be a part of this community and the amount of synergy we have created with the different community members and community groups, I feel like it's just one big family. It, it really is. We can show up at the park together, you know, or serendipitously show up at some event and it turns into a family affair. You yeah. know, we're just having a good time, we're, we're passing jokes back and forth and I love, I love that sense of... Um, that sense of home, I guess, mm -hmm. homeliness. You know, yeah. you see the, the Rockefeller, or not the Rockefeller, the picture of everybody sitting around the... Norman Rockwell, yeah. Norman Rockwell, excuse me. Um, and I feel like that's kind of what Cedar would be pictured as. Yeah. You know? Yeah, we, I think here at this radio station, look at it as our number one job to be a, a gathering place, a, a virtual audio gathering place for people in the community. And we're not the only ones that are trying to do that. I think Southern Utah University brings people together with uh, its right, resources with, and events. Right. And there are other organizations in the community that, that create that feeling that you're talking about. And that's, that's an intangible that I hope we never lose despite the 
the growth that we see. Uh, I, I hope that as people come in, we can welcome them into that rather than, than have that dissipate. Right, and I think, I think we have to step forward. The locals have to step forward and start welcoming our neighbors I into so. town. Yeah, I think it's on us. You know, and to maintain I maintain that. I don't think. Oh yeah, it's something that we just observe and say, oh, okay, uh, you know, as a passive thing. I think it's uh, a responsibility that we have to reach out to new people who come in our community and make them part. Uh, 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 and invite them to be part of the community. Kind of like drinking the cooler water. We have yeah. to invite them, and it, the cooler water can become so watered down that it doesn't necessarily exist. You know, the yeah. punch or whatever. We have to keep, we have to keep that mentality alive. You know, my in our neighborhood, we there was a two month period between October and December that we made cookies once a week and we delivered it. You know, to each one of our neighbors. And it's been a little while since because the baby's gotten older and, you know, we're less, you know, we can't necessarily make cookies while he's napping kind of a thing. So we're re-coordinating that at our house. But I love doing, you know, small acts of kindness. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's where it starts is we do small acts of kindness. And I mean, small acts meaning, you know, if you have time to make cookies, great. Opening the doors for people, you know, saying thank you. You know, for whatever reason, thank you and you're welcome and those types of interactions with different humans, they set off really good good energy, you know, between people and and it starts a waterfall effect. Mm -hmm. If I open the door for somebody, they're going to open a door for yeah. somebody, you know. Yeah. If I'm going to wave to my neighbor and ask them about their day, you know, nonchalantly, you know, and, and get to know them. Because they're in a new area, they don't know what's going on or, you know, hey, did you know we're having a neighborhood block party, you know, in a couple mm -hmm. weeks? No, I didn't. What's it about? You know, kind of interactions. We have to keep that alive. And as being a part of this community and an insurance agent in this community, I like keeping people informed of what's going on. You know, yeah. especially with, um, with potential claim situations or protecting their assets because it's, it's all relative to your situation, right? right my asset base is different than your asset base versus Tim's versus anybody else's. We have so many different asset bases, which means we have very different liability limits. Mm -hmm. And sitting down with a real agent, with a human, instead of you know clicking through an insurance policy, sitting down with a human is, is invaluable in that. And going through somebody who doesn't, doesn't have an alternative objective. You know, I don't care if you switch to Farm Bureau or not. You know, I want to make sure that you are an informed consumer. Just like when I go and buy dog food, you know, if I need to switch brands, I'm going to talk to the, the hopefully a more knowledgeable person in the store and be like, okay, so my dog's experiencing this. What do you recommend? Yeah. It's the same type of interaction you should have with your insurance agent. You should be having annual reviews. You should be talking to them. You should know their name, not, well, I have Allstate. Okay, so who's your agent? It's great that you have Allstate. Who is your agent? Who can you call? and connect with immediately and get answers to the questions you have immediately. And that's, a pro that's the type of value that I provide in my agency is, is we are a phone call away. You call me, I answer, yes, I do travel a little bit and there's a little bit here and there that I'm not necessarily you know, right on top of it at that moment because we all have schedules and we're kind of busy, but it, it's all relative. You know, Call me, talk to me about it, ask me questions, Let's figure something out. I want to say that I provide, I, I provide above and beyond for my clients because I, nine times out of ten, I'm going to their houses, I'm going to their their fields, I'm going to their workplaces to provide value to them, whether that's through savings or through product base or through, you know, extended um, extended liability limits because their assets have grown that large. With my team of underwriters, we go on site, we visit with the business owners, we go through the process of where were you at, where do you want to be at, what does your growth look like, do you want to maintain, do you want to, you know, kind of step back. In that, we do succession planning. You know, I have a team of underwriters for succession planning specifically of, of what kind of succession plan do we need to put in place for this family. What do they need? Do they need just pass on money? Do they need debt protection, you know, let's say they have $2 million in debt. Well, then we need a little bit of life insurance to make up for that. You know, 
or figure out how whoever's going to get the farm is going to continue to make those payments. You know, and there's always revolving credit involved. Well, how do you want to handle that? There's always siblings involved. In town, we've gone through at least five or six families that have split off and had bad blood between them in the last mm -hmm. 10 years. And it's bad blood. It's not just, Chris, I'm not going to talk to you for a week. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's like years of feuding. And it's incredible how much greed is involved, you know, for, for all of the different things going on. Because at the end of the day, those that choose the higher ground, you know, they'll be remarked in the community as choosing the higher ground, not being a curmudgeon or a, mm -hmm. or a Grinch, per se. Yeah. And as an insurance agent, I love, I love my ability to, to educate people. You know, whether I'm working with business owners or ag producers or general, just Joe Schmo, home and auto, I go to an eight to five job, right? I love working with all of my clients and they are, they're the backbone of my agency. You know, I try to call in and check with them, check in with them at least quarterly, you know, Hey, what's going on in your life? What's, what's happened lately? How's Susie doing in dance? What's Tommy doing with baseball? You know? And I love to keep a pulse on the community because through that, I can, I can kind of gauge the direction of what other conversations we need to have. Do we need to increase your auto liability limits because you have a teenage driver now? Yeah, you know, you're not going to get that kind of service from a drop-down menu. No, at a website. Not necessarily. No, you know, what do I do if yeah. my kid's turning 16? Mm -hmm. Do I have to put them on the insurance? Yeah. You know, well, and that's a real question that I get asked. And I'm like, well, what's your risk tolerance? You know, per state guidelines, it says, and legislation, I believe, it says that any 16-year-old driver has to be an insured driver. Not the vehicle they're driving is insured, but they have to be listed somewhere on an insurance policy. And whether parents do that or not, it's none of my business. I'm not the parent. I'm not the, the overseeing body of that household. What I can suggest and and make them aware of the repercussions if they're not, if their teenagers aren't covered, mm. and that's part of a real conversation. You yeah. again, you can't get that in a drop down menu. You can't get the knowledge base of an insurance agent such as myself. That we, I mean, we're licensed. We we go through study materials. We take tests. We are licensed individuals. Most clickbait, click not clickbait. Most click companies are are supervised, you know, one agent or one licensed person is watching out for 50 underlings who aren't licensed who are just processing the data. Right. So you can imagine the volume of that and the volume of potentially missed opportunities within that. Mm -hmm. I love I love being able to travel around this community too. It it means that I get to try to help take care of other communities as well. You know, I, I still have the office over in Kanab, which is fantastic, and it's grown, and we're, we're gaining a footprint over there, and it's incredible how much Kanab has changed in the last 15 years. Mm. We've gone from an agriculture kind of sleepy town, you know, Kanab's yeah. there, it's a good place to go visit, to a more like five or six years behind Moab, you know? Mm -hmm. It's grown in popularity. It's the gateway to Lake Powell. It's the gateway to Jacobs Lake and the North Rim. Right. It's, it's becoming... And it's the, it's the gateway to backcountry Zion, you know, and Bryce. Mm -hmm. It's becoming another hub such as Springdale and or Hurricane, I would say, right. of, of people trying to travel there and then branch off, you know, an hour, but come mm -hmm. back to stay in Canada right. and go out another hour or, or so. And so it's really cool to, to go through the different people moving in and going through the different risks and opportunities that are associated with that. Because... Yeah. As more numbers grow, the likelihood of things happening grows. It's, right. it's the law of numbers. Mm -hmm. It's also really cool that I, I have the opportunity, you know, to walk around our neighborhoods. And with walking around our neighborhoods, we've been doing door hangers. And as we've been doing door hangers, I have to quickly announce that we are drawing ticket number 299 today. Um, so if they'd like to call in, it's 435-586-5900. We're doing a $50 door prize on our door hangers. Now they're not, I'm not selling things with the door hangers. So when there's solicitation, like no solicitation signs, I'm just informing you guys about the radio show. It's, I mean, 
it has information about me as an insurance agent, but it's really just, you know, hey, tune in weekly, you know, to Wired Wednesdays. Um, but we're, we've numbered them and we walk through our neighborhoods. We get to know the neighborhoods, the neighbors. You know, if they are home, I've tried to approach them and talk to them about their yards, their houses, why they like it, you know, how long they've lived here, when did they move here, where did they move from, mm -hmm. and get to know them because, again, we have to keep, we have to keep the punch full. You know, we are, they've moved to this community for a reason. Let's remind them of that reason and get to know them, you know, through that. It's, it's pretty incredible that how receptive different people have been to that. You know, I have three new neighbors in my neighbor, three new neighbors in my street of, you know, 15 or 20 houses. And all of them moved in from, you know, as far as Boston, Massachusetts. Mm. And as close as, I believe... Ely, Nevada, I think is the next closest one. But it's it's cool that they moved into our neighborhood and they chose our neighborhood for a specific reason. Well, I want to keep that reason alive. Yeah. You know, small town feel, small town, you know, get to know you, try to help out. You know, if you need sugar or eggs and you don't want to run to the store, you need kids tended for a minute, send them over. You know, it's it's not a big deal to be that better person, to step out of your comfort zone and make new friends and welcome those people into our communities. Yeah. And once again, uh, you know, we... I came here for a reason. I wasn't born and raised here. Where are you from? Uh, Springville. Oh! You just had that feeling, you know? And I took that as a sign that this is where we belong, so... Uh, uh, we, we talk about the growth that we're experiencing, and, and we certainly are. But uh, at the top of the program, we talked about keeping the intangibles intact. And, and that being really a responsibility on us, rather than to sit back and passively watch uh, the growth occur, but not actively go out and welcome people in and, and continue to do those things that we've always done as a small community. Right. Uh, that's... That's our responsibility, isn't it? I think it is, and especially with, I mean, and how long have you lived in Southern Utah? Then, uh, since 04, I guess it was. So, 16? Oh, oh 03, yeah. 17, 18 yeah. years? So, how much has Springfield changed in that time? Oh, a lot, yeah. yeah and did they keep the small, did they keep the small town? Much less so, yeah. Uh, it's a bedroom community now, you know. Yeah, it's, it's it's it used to be kind of a self-contained community, but now it's a suburb. Yeah, yeah. and it it's incredible how much power our individual communities have within that. And I and I hope Iron County, I hope I hope King County, I hope Garfield and Paiute County, and even Beaver and Millard County keep those keep those small town principles alive, even with the influx of population that we've been talking about over multiple shows now. You know, we need to be welcoming you know our neighbors and and helping them understand, you know, we are a, you know, you need, I guess, an eggs and sugar community. If you need eggs and sugar, please stop by. You know, get to know us, talk to us, get to know your local insurance agent, get to know the different options available through that. And and within that, you'll know why you moved to the community. Right. You know, why the, the energy or your higher power or whoever told you to move to Iron County, <laughs> you know. Or I'm just getting the hell out of Dodge, wherever Dodge was, pardon the language over the air. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you you move to these places out of out of a reason, whether you've loved the house, you know, well love your love the neighborhood. You know, love the community. Yeah, we don't have everything. We don't have a Costco yet, unfortunately. Um, somebody said that it's in the works, but you know, it's been, been in the works for, for the fifteen years. years. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we are we are slowing about, but I believe with time, value will, will come around and and being your local insurance agent, I love the opportunity to meet new people and get to know them and get to know why they moved to this community right. because through numbers will grow, will grow so well in creating and maintaining that small town feel. Yeah, amen. So anyways, um, we're short on time. This has been Wired Wednesday with McKinnon Hansen. My number is 435-592-2021. My, my office is located just uh, east of Mountain America on North Main. 
I need to get used to saying that. Yeah, you stumbled a little bit. I did, I did. New information, isn't it? <laughs> new information. This has been McKenna Hansen, your local Farm Bureau financial agent. Thank you so much.